This is the Bulls Copperhead Evo 2 750 Wave. It's kind of a cross country mountain bike with 120 millimeters of suspension travel up front, a very nice air fork from SR Sun Tour, 32 millimeter stanchions, a little bit thicker tapered steer tube. So you could upgrade this. It's not just a straight thing. We got a 15 millimeter through axle down here with boost hub spacing, which supports these plus size tires really nicely. V Tire Co. Crown Gem 27.5 by 2.6. So plus size tires come in 2.6, 2.8, or 3. So this is sort of like right at plus size. And that gives you a little bit more float and cushion. And if you look at these tires, I mean, they've got pretty thick knobs, but they're fairly shallow right down the center. So I think, you know, coming back to the cross country or almost like a hybrid application, if you're riding on streets, they're going to be a little bit smoother and more efficient. But we climbed up here and I mean, this was, this was pretty steep at some sections and it's just dirt and it worked great. I actually had a really good time riding this thing because it's got the Bosch Performance Line CX motor. This is the mountain bike class one motor and it's the smart system. Okay, so this is like the latest generation of Bosch technology. Uh, before we get into the details on that, we can look at the back, just standard hub spacing, 135 millimeters with a nine millimeter quick release over here. So quick release front and rear if you have to do some trail maintenance or something. Pretty decent brakes. Shimano, 180 millimeters. Hydraulic disc brakes, two finger levers, adjustable reach, which is great. I mean, I look at this very approachable frame and if you got it in the smallest size, I can imagine, you know, maybe like my mom or my, my girlfriend or something taking this bike and just having a blast riding around on it and being able to just sort of hop forward very easily and stabilize the bike, which is wonderful. Now it doesn't have a seat post dropper. It comes with a rigid seat post, 30.9 millimeters. And you could replace this with like a suspension post or maybe, you know, wire in a mechanical dropper if you wanted to do that. I'm a fan of that technology because as you start descending and you want to use your legs as a shock absorber, you can drop that saddle. It just gives you more clearance. But there are also times where I'm, I'm with a rider who, again, we're mountain biking, but maybe for them, that's kind of, they're, they're pushing their, their boundaries a little bit or their skill level and they'll drop the saddle and they won't be getting full leg extension. So a dropper post is, is cool. And with 30.9 millimeters, you can definitely set that up if you want. You'll notice that the wires are really clean. They're mostly internally routed through the frame. Bulls does a really good job. This is a high quality brand, a higher quality company, in my opinion. They've got over 200 shops in North America. And so you'll be able to look at the different sizes and you get, get some post-purchase support. It only comes in one color here. So we've got this sort of a glossy gray. I think it looks really nice. We've got some good branding going on. I love that it's got mounting points for adding a rear rack. We've got some bottle cage mounts here, or you could use that for a folding lock. There's even a mounting point for a smartphone, which we'll talk about later. But some of the other touch points, we've got locking ergonomic grips, a wider handlebar, sort of a low rise. So this is mountain bike, you know, it gives you that leverage for steering and handling these heavier, larger, it's kind of a beefier tires and wheels. Um, the spokes, black, the hubs, the rims, everything really nice, beautiful. It matches, and I, I really appreciate that. I love that they've got a slap guard here because sometimes you're going off-road and that chain will be bounced around, but it's, it's actually handled really well. We have a 38-tooth narrow wide chain ring, so it slots perfectly into the chain, and it's not as easy for that chain to bounce off. We even have a plastic guide here, so it just really keeps it on track, and it might also clear mud or debris that sticks to that chain. Love that. 165 millimeter crank arms, plastic platform pedals, and with sort of, you know, I see 170s, that's sort of the industry standard, so a little bit shorter. It, maybe you won't get as many pedal strikes, and if you're spinning faster, your, your feet won't fly off the pedals as easily. If we come to the back, look at this thing. We've got a really wide cluster. This is a big cassette, 11 speeds. So it's 11 to 51 tooth. That's that really big uh, sprocket in the back. And that's your climbing and starting gear. So this, this can climb almost anything. When I was going up the, the trail, I was having trouble keeping my front wheel down on the ground and it, traction wasn't really a problem torque wasn't a problem 85 newton meters from that bosch motor it was really just about balancing and, and kind of getting enough traction up here to steer from from tipping side to side so i i really like that shimano dior long cage derailleur with a clutch here so we can turn this to the on position and it just tightens that up so the chain won't be bouncing around as much or you can turn it off makes it easier to service the wheel and take the wheel off you know fix the tire something like that 
And it looks like these rims say tubeless ready. You could potentially run this tubeless with a little bit of uh, effort and maybe some accessories. So coming back to the motor for a second here, if we look at the, the other side, this is like the latest and greatest from Bosch. Bosch Performance Lines CX Smart System, magnesium housing. I believe it weighs like 6.39 pounds, so very lightweight. And it measures three signals, rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. And I believe that the rear wheel speed sensor, yeah, it's kind of built into this, um, kind of connected to the rotor, right, or uh, the hub, right there where the disc brake is. And it's just a lot better protected. They used to have like a little spoke magnet that was on the spoke and a plastic thing. This is just, it's sturdier and it's kind of tucked hidden out of the way. I really like that. So imagine you're riding along, it's measuring all those signals and it's listening for shifting. So, you know, if you're climbing and you're shifting gears and stuff, there's a lot of pressure on your drive chain and this thing is smart enough to sort of ease off. So the motor kind of backs off for a second and that way you can shift more smoothly without bending the teeth. And there are some bigger gaps between these these sprockets too. So I, I just, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's one of those reasons that uh, I like the Bosch system. This is the higher power motor. So it makes a little bit more noise sometimes, especially at higher cadence, but it can support over 120 RPM, which means if you're shifting down into that low gear and climbing, it's still, it's supporting you. It's not dropping out or fading away. I really like that they've got this you know, cute little fender up front, sort of the mud guard, so you don't get splashed in the face when you're going through the puddles and stuff. So we just, we leaned the bike on this rock right here to get some photos and there actually are mounting points for adding a kickstand at the rear. It looks like 40 millimeters of spacing. And then there's additional threaded eyelets or bosses for adding a rear rack. So Chris was saying that the team has taken these bike packing and adding the kickstand really helped to support that additional weight. Yeah, for this next little bit, we had to lay the bike down because it doesn't actually come with the kickstand. And I want to talk a little bit about the charger and everything. So this is the four amp smart system charger. It's not backwards compatible with the older standard four amp charger. It's got like a slightly different interface, but otherwise it's very similar. It's like 1.6 pounds. It's got a removable wall side plug. It's very durable. It's fairly light. I, I really like these chargers. I think Bosch does a great job. But again, the backwards compatibility. Uh, these are the Monkey Link lights. So for the rear light, you could replace that little reflector with this and it would run off that 750 watt hour battery. Same with the headlight. I remember the first time I saw this and I was, you know, I was kind of complaining like, oh, you know, once it's mounted, can you aim it? But you can actually adjust the aim using like, I think a screw inside. So the light, the light is aimable. I think that's really great. Just the positioning is up high. It's not gonna get blocked by anything, the wheel, the fenders. It's not here on the arch of the suspension fork bouncing around. And with the display panel, you just hold kind of the, the plus button for a couple seconds and they would light up. Now the battery itself, it's inside that combined down tube right here. And again, this, this frame, it, this approachable wave platform, that's the only frame style this particular model comes in. It's gonna be really approachable, but they've, they've added a lot of strength and stiffness here with this extra little mini, mini top tube or just kind of a reinforcement brace there. Um, in order to access the battery, there's a locking core right here that we're gonna to get to in a second, but you'll notice that there isn't a charge port on the right side of the bike. With a mountain bike like this, it's best practice to lay it down on the left side because you wanna keep the derailleur from getting bumped and hitting the ground. Now we do have the disc brake rotors. You don't want those to hit a rock or something, but also in this case, the charge port, that's on the left side of the bike. So it's almost like you've, you've gotta kind of pick the bike up like this if you wanna charge it, plug it in, and then lay it down like we just had, or lean it up against a wall in your garage or your shed or something like that. Just be mindful. I mean, I, there are some other models from Bulls where the charge port and the key are on the right side. And for me, that would have been much easier. It's just a minor gripe, but I wanted to call it out as something worth considering. At least both of them are up high. They're not down here. They're not in the path of the crank arms or anything. So the first thing to do if you wanna access the battery is push down on this little plastic switch here, or I push up <laughs> and then remove this shield. Bulls has a bunch of bikes, like kind of the Evo line where there's the integrated battery and these shields, I think they'd be pretty easy to find and replace, but it doesn't lock to the frame the way that the battery does. So it'd be easy to kind of leave that and forget it or have someone maybe mess with it and take it off the bike. 
at this point we can we can get the battery off and chris is here he's got the keys yep. it's going to help me out these are abus keys they can be matched to folding locks and other accessories i really like that it's kind of an upgraded part you twist it the battery pops down to this first position and then you need to push this little button to get it all the way out 9.4 pounds on this battery pack okay and it's surrounded by aluminum alloy it's really tough but it is a little bit heavier and you can see a little led five bars right there so you've got kind of a some idea of how full the battery capacity is 20 percent increments keep in mind this is lithium ion batteries inside extreme heat is kind of hard on those it's not going to get as many full charge cycles if that battery is hot all the time like if you leave it in a garage or something also if it's really cold it's going to temporarily stunt your range so that's one of the reasons it's nice that you can actually remove the battery it's a really nice system bosch has the two-year comprehensive warranty and all of their parts are high ip rating so dust and water protection they're they're really durable i think at this point we can start to put the battery back in sort of line it up at the bottom and then as he gets it close you act you have to actually like twist the key in order to get that second step with it's really a two-hand exercise not only do you have to hold and support that 9.4 pound battery but you need your other hand like kind of opening the slot with the lock and then it gets into the first step and then the second step by force we get the shield back line it up just right and then make sure you push that little switch down so that this doesn't fly off as you're riding in total, the bike with the battery and everything you see here, about 56.4 pounds. And this frame does come in four different sizes, so there might be slight variation. We're on the 44 centimeter right here, but I think some of the extra weight just comes from having that combined tube and the extra support that we talked about earlier. And I think we could come up to the display and talk about that next. This is kind of basic, sort of the starting point. We only have the LED remote. It doesn't have the Kiox 300. There's no other display that's included. You could pay extra for that and maybe have the shop install it for you. But all you really need is this LED remote. If we press the power button here, this thing comes to life and it's, try to get the shadow, there we go. So we've got these blue and white LEDs. There are five rectangles and they, re they represent the steps in the charge level. But when they turn from blue to white, that represents a half step. So they're actually 10 increments. So it's, it's more precise than just five. You get 10% steps. And then over here we have this light bar. So as we change assist levels, the lowest one is eco. And then we, we keep going up. The highest one is turbo, red. So even if you, you don't have to read something is what I'm saying. All, all you really have to do is like, how much battery do I have left and what level assist am I in? There are some other buttons here like left and right and select, but none of those really do anything because there's, there's no display mounted onto the bike. Those would really be uh, useful if you had the Kiox 300. And I also really like the trigger shifter. So Shimano Dior, you can push it with your thumb or pull it with your trigger finger. And then we have a multi-shift three shifts you can dump those gears if you're going into a big climb and maybe the last thing i want to point out is that there's a little usb-c plug in the bottom it has a little wrench on it but that doesn't offer any charging support it's really just for diagnostics and so i point this out because uh, chris is going to come over here and show us his phone he's got this really cool case that you can get and it's even bulls branded right here. What's this technology called? It's a company called SP Connect that we've partnered with to basically create an easy and super secure uh, phone solution. So and that show you how it, it works. Yeah. comes with this cap, right? The SP mm -hmm. Connect stem cap. Look at that. Wow. I mean, super, super sturdy. So you can mount your phone to this and then you don't need a display. Correct. You've got so much detail here. You can see the percentage of the battery charge level, not just a 10% increment, but a 1% increments there. Your range, a lot of the stuff that you'd see on, on another display. You can even go to your like rides and see, okay, where are we and where do we want to go? And it can help you do kind of GPS route planning. You could see your trips that you've you've done in the past and it even connects to some of these social apps like Strava and- Correct, uh, Kamut, another one. Yeah, they're continuing to expand all their iterations right now. So yeah. it's exciting stuff. It's getting better and better. And, and the other thing is it's not only that, it's not just like directions and stats about the bike, but also you can adjust how this, this system performs. So we could go to like the different assist levels of which there are four 
okay? So it's like Eco, Tour Plus, um, and then EMTB and Turbo. And Turbo and Eco, those are the ones uh, that, that you can adjust. So you can change your assist level, how dynamic it is, uh, maximum speed, and maximum torque. So dynamic is sort of like, I think that's kind of like acceleration mm -hmm. or something. Yep. So if you want to accelerate really fast, you're going to use the battery faster, but with a 750 watt hour battery pack, you've got a lot of juice. So does this one also have like heart rate monitor and some of that integration? I believe it does. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that's part of the app? Uh, that... They're continuing to build in locking features so you can see this yes. right here. So Thank you for remembering. Yeah. A geo fence that you can hook up to where you walk away from your bike with your phone and it recognizes the the Bluetooth connection is uh, dropped and so it will stop the motor from being able to turn on kind of like a kill switch in a car yeah um, you can still ride the bike away manually but they continue to come up with aftermarket uh, add-ons as well that are make it even more secure which Bosch does a great job so this is great maybe with that said we just hop on this and take it for a ride love to just getting started here turned on the display I'm at the highest level red that's turbo and we're on an, an incline here. I'm just gonna start out. Yeah. Kicks in right away. And it really helps if you're in a low gear. There's that high cadence. It's nice, it just supports me the whole way so I'm not losing power. I'm gonna do some shifting. Look at that shift detection. A little bit harsh. I mean, we're climbing and I'm shifting to higher gears. So there's more tension on it, but the motor's supposed to cut out a little bit so it's not so hard on the chain and the sprockets. Woo! All nice. right, here we are. Yeah. So beautiful. Watch falling rocks. Find this ridge right here if you want. Yeah, I'm game. Good call. This is really steep. Wow. Handling it like a champ. Nice one. Great. Not sure if you guys can tell, but this is pretty steep. Whoa! 
I'm sitting down to keep the tail down. It's just about balance. Oh. Yeah, I just lost my balance. Let's try that walk mode here. Thank you. Hold the walk mode and you get the little lights and then push. There it is. Walk mode. Oh yeah. Putting it to the test. That's exactly what it's for. Nice one. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Great view at the thermals. Mm -hmm. Well guys, what a beautiful day. That is the Bulls Copperhead Evo 2 750 Wave. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. We've measured this by hand. Chris was really helpful, kind of studying the bike and just trying to figure out how it fits into their lineup. It just really seems like an approachable bike and something that's still trail capable. It's pretty heavy duty. A lot of these components, I mean, the spread on the, the cassette back there, the suspension fork. And you guys also, do you still have the Copperhead Evo HD? We do. We have that in a Diamond Ando wave like this. And that can carry um, some more weight with it as well. Okay. So um, this is, has a tiny bit of a spec upgrade instead of the weight carrying capacity. Interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, because I was like, that's a great spread. So this is sort of like higher spec and maybe 300 pounds max weight and that Correct. one's like 350 330 330 so heavy duty mm -hmm. is that kind of what? okay yep. and hence the top tube because the top tube it, it does strengthen the frame it might even weigh a little bit less with that the top tube it might yeah yeah i don't know i've reviewed that separately weighed it separately mm -hmm. you said there's someone on your team who who likes this bike and rides it yeah yeah i've got a guy named adam that has uh lower back issues and so it's a little bit hard for him to throw his leg over the top tube so being mm. able to just step through and get on the bike really makes a difference for him it makes sense yeah has a much lower standover height and um, yeah really approachable so back at electricbikereview.com I've covered a lot of these bikes you can compare them there's a cool comparison tool and there's also forums and comments and stuff like that so you could see what other people think they actually own the bike I mean I'm having a blast out here right but I'm just looking at this for for a day or two uh, I think that's it I love you guys oh you know what uh, this is a free review Bulls is helping with the hotel but Part, you know, I'm trying to be objective and just cover bikes that I think they're a lot of people are gonna have access to through the shops and I, I'm trying to be objective and be thorough and everything. So anyways, have a great day, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.